our main focus is to relax these feet which are extremely shrunken and not a good shape at all so we relax those using a mixture of water cotton wool and fungicide and hopefully then we can reposition those toes in a more natural posture well the first thing to do is to take these eyes out it's a very old poor quality eye so we're not too concerned about scratching it these are more like teddy bear's eyes there it comes it's the eyes that make these specimens if the eyes are wrong the whole thing is, is never going to look um, presentable so it's worth spending a little time trying to get these eyes right varnished on the show side look yeah and dull on the other so do you it see is. that yes because this, <laughs> is, this is the side it would have been viewed from of course yes and bother to do the other mm. side this varnish was put on pretty liberally when this thing was first prepared and over the years it's become discolored and it's started to become sticky and a bit like a bit treacle like and we'll use some acetone but it's essentially it's like taking nail varnish off dip a small quantity of cotton wool into the acetone and very gently just remove it like this that's starting to lift off nicely and this taxidermist when he first prepared this for some reason this is beyond me he decided to varnish all around the eye as well actually putting the varnish on the feathers the good thing about acetone, it, it evaporates really quickly, so we can gradually get that varnish away from those feathers and hopefully they'll soften up and become fl fluffy like this on the top there, with the same acetone solution. Get into all these folds and clean all this old varnish and old oil paint off. So with all the varnish removed, we can now start to remodel the nostrils we can see how we want this it's nice and smooth so that's what we're trying to recreate we'll do a similar thing on this lower mandible it doesn't need an awful lot but we need to just start modeling it on and what we can do when this is set we can very very lightly sandpaper it and it smooths it right off so between the toes they've got kind of a webbing where it's shrunk and cracked obviously that would just not be there in a living bird so I'm not trying to be totally anatomically correct if you imagine a, a knobbly chicken's leg it's that kind of effect that we're after this particular talon at some stage has disappeared um, and what we're left with is the actual bony core of, the, of the, the claw, the toenail, essentially. So in order to make this one appear the same as the others, I've actually used the same modelling material to make a false talon, or a cover for this, this bit of bone sticking out. And that will slip over there and eventually be secured with some conservation adhesive. The eye sockets have had wet cotton wool in overnight, so hopefully they should be now relaxed enough to take the new glass eyes. We're just going to line the whole eye socket with this compound so that when we press the eye in, it's, it's got something to sink into and attach. So now we're going to put this eye into the socket, which can be a little awkward, and we need to Pull these eyelids around this glass eye without pushing it in too far because it's very difficult to pull it out again. We've got the eyelids around it now so now it's a case of pushing it into place very carefully. It's important that this bird actually looks like it's looking forward and not just just straight out and try to make it not look too glassy eyed. We know that they are glass eyes but we try to create an illusion. So what I do is put a pin in there so that it holds the cut the corner of the eye in and then while it dries it will give a more impression of it looking forward always keep 
an image in the mind of how you want it to look. It's, it's sculpture more than taxidermy, so if it doesn't look right, change it. So it's very important that we, we get it right before it dries. This eye has now set overnight, the skin has tightened again, so we can take out all these pins and it should stay where it was fixed yesterday. And there we are. You can see that they're quite full and plump, these eyelids. So we're going to use the modelling compound to try and reproduce that kind of effect. The good thing about this material is it's an adhesive, so even though it's at this point it's ready to fall off quite, quite easily because it's still soft, as long as we've got it attached, as long, when it dries it becomes even more secure. You can see that this, there's a ridge, a ridge of bare skin, which is this ridge here, but I'm going to slightly emphasise that because there's, a, there's a, a very, quite an unnatural fold there. There is a fold, but it's not in that shape, so we're just going to adjust that so that it looks a little more realistic. And if we've got any eyelashes that have started to stick to the eyelid, we can just lift those carefully out. Well, there's only a couple of hairs there, I don't want to trap them. So, lift those up and just slip that underneath. In fact, they'll probably help me by holding it in place. I'm just going to try and put a, a bit of a gape there. Just gives the impression of a, of a fleshy corner to the mouth. And just make sure it looks like that mouth can open if it wish. These birds have got quite pink feet actually, a bluish tinge. These are acrylic paints which dry quite quickly. Often what I'll do is, is use acrylic paints to get the general base colour. And then when that's dry I'll use oils on the top because we can blend oils, they don't, they don't dry nearly as quickly. It might take one or two coats, but I don't want to put it on too thick, because if you put it on too thick it actually can distort certain shapes and fill in detail. So I think these feet, are, these feet will paint up really nicely. That's going to blend into that lower mandible so we just don't give it don't give it to a hard edge. Can't do a great deal of blending with acrylics because they dry so quickly. And said so that it's blended pretty quite well that has. We don't want this the paint on the dark tip of the build to be too thick because it's not a consistent flat colour. So we're kind of tinting it more than painting it. These birds are quite dark around the eyes, so we don't want any kind of light fleshy bits of skin showing. And as we're going to add some artificial feathers to this, it gives a nice dark background for them to sit on. It's very thin, but we can put a, another th very thin coat on and build it up that way. In fact, any lighter bits, we can just touch those in. So what I'm going to do now is just apply some colour to this area of bare skin because we're going to put some artificial feathers on some of this skin and I don't want the light colour showing through. When this has got feathering on the top of it, it'll, the feathering will look that much thicker because it's dark underneath as well.